We discard the jewel and busy ourselves with shells. We discard the truth and consume ourselves with lies. What is ephemeral, we clutch as eternal. What is inevitable, we carelessly dismiss. What is in flux, we ardently clasp. Our everlasting companion, we rashly forsake. We have fallen into the dreadful well of ignorance. O Nanak, compassionate one, lift us up. Verses from Guru Arjan Dev, found in his collection of hymns known as the Sukmani, one of the sections of the Sikh scriptures known as the Adi Granth. Beginning today's Satsang edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio, featuring some highly charged spiritual readings from two different traditions of Satmat in rural India. Very much unaffected by the West, very much unaffected by the modern world. Presenting in a no-nonsense sort of way, the path of the Masters as it always has been. There is a kind of natural progression or order to these readings. We start at the beginning with readings about the first meditation practice known as Simran or Manas Jap, the repetition of names of God as mantras, remembering God by repeating his names. From there, inner light, inner sound, and the ascension of the soul, ultimately reaching the final destination of oneness with the Supreme Being in the top plane of creation. You'll hear readings about Simran, and meditation practice from a book I put online not too long ago called The Light of Ajab, featuring the teachings of Santji, a Q&A, a series of Q&A se- sessions with Santji actually over the decades. And then from there, verses from Baba Devi Sahib of Maradabad and from the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi Paramhans. On the meditation practice, I've been really looking forward to sharing this information about the practice of Sant Mat. The meditation practice, going within, exploring the kingdom of the heavens that are within you, today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. This is from a section of the Light of Ajab called The Fruit of Simran. Someone asked Santji a question about proper meditation practice. You know, is it okay to use your plugs? Should I wear a mask? Should I meditate in a cave? Should I close my eyes? Does it make any difference if my eyes are closed or open? Proper practice. Santji's reply. We can meditate without closing our eyes, but if we will do our practice like that, it will be very difficult for us to look inwardly. That is why, in the beginning, until we develop the habit of seeing the inner things, we should close our eyes and do meditation with our eyes closed. You can use a blindfold, and whenever you become aware that you're eyes are open, you should at once close them and meditate like that. When we perfect ourselves in doing meditation, when the inner veil is lifted and when we reach the Almighty God, after that this problem is solved by itself, then it does not make any difference whether our eyes are closed or open. 
Just a brief comment before I read the next question and answer. In addition to a sleep mask, uh, you can meditate in a cave or you can buy an opaque shade and have it installed in a certain room of your home on the window or windows in a certain room of your home or apartment or wherever you live and have a kind of cave on demand. That can be very convenient to be able to darken a room and have a nice darkened room. Good for inner meditation, inner seeing. The next question from the book Light of Ajab. Question, is it all right to use earplugs or things to muffle outward sounds if you're doing Simran, say, at an airport or a busy place? And also, is it all right to use them when you're doing bhajan? Santji's reply. You can happily use all these things, but I will tell you one thing, and this is the reality that when you are doing when you're doing Simran, the mind becomes still, then it makes no difference whether we are in a crowded place or a lonely place. The dear one who has stilled his mind finds peace even when he is in a crowded place. You know that in this world everybody is doing his or her own work without paying any attention to what other people are doing. You know that when we are flying in a plane, the pilot is engaged in his work and he does not pay any attention to the sounds and the noises which are happening in the aircraft. At the same time, the stewards and the other people working in the aircraft are doing their work and they are not bothered by the sounds over there. So, if you also just go on doing your work of Simran without paying any attention to the sounds happening there, you can also do as they are doing. Guru Nanak Sahib has said, Those whose hearts are still feel seclusion everywhere. If our mind is not getting the fruit of Simran, if we have not given him the taste of the sound current, then even if we are sitting in a dark cave, even if we are sitting underground, still our mind will remain restless. He will be spread all over the world and he will go everywhere. But if we are giving him the fruit of Simran, and if he is getting the taste of the sound current, then even if you are in a crowded place, your mind will remain peaceful. After rising above the mind and the organs of senses, when we listen to the sound current, then it seems to us that the sound can be heard even by people who are living 20 or 30 miles away. But that is not the case. The sound current is so loud that we feel that it can be heard by many other people, but the reality is that only the person who is hearing the sound current is able to hear it and not the other people. Many dear ones who have manifested the shabd or the sound current within write me letters and they even tell me in their private interviews that they cannot bear the loudness of the sound current. I mean to say that when your mind is stilled by doing Simran, you start hearing the sound current by itself, then even if you are in a crowded place where there are so many noises and disturbances, still you will not be disturbed by those outer sounds, because the sound of the Shabbat or Shabd is so loud that it will cover all the other sounds, and you will be able to do your meditation even in the crowded places. What happens is that when the dear ones get the initiation, they do not put as much emphasis on doing Simran as they put on listening to the sound current. That is why they always lack in Simran. No doubt they hear the sound current, but because they have not yet perfected their Simran, because the Simran is necessary for rising above or withdrawing from the nine openings of the body, as they have not brought the soul to the eye center, the place where the shabd or sound current is coming, that is why the sound which they hear does not give them any interest. Sometimes they like to hear the sound current, but the sound current is not as effective as it should be and does not pull the soul up because the dear ones have not done enough Simran. If we have done a lot of Simran, and if we have brought our soul to the eye center, then our soul gets on the shabd or the sound, 
which is coming there, and we will hear there, and we are able to reach our real home. If we hear the sound current after perfecting our Simran and after reaching the eye center, that sound current, or Shabd, will definitely pull us up, and we will like that very much. Nowadays, what do people do whenever they have done a little bit of Simran during the day and when their mind is a little bit quiet and still? Then the sound current, which they hear, is very melodious and they like it, and sometimes they feel a little bit of withdrawal. Other times when their mind is not quiet and they have not done enough Simran, then no doubt they hear the sound current, but still the sound current is not able to pull them up. In the early ages, the masters used to give initiation in two parts. First, they would give the Simran, and then after the disciples had perfected their Simran and completed the course of Simran, they were given the sound current. But in that system, there was one difficulty for the disciple that many times the masters would leave the body before the disciples could perfect their Simran, and then they were not protected because you know that the sound current is, is the only thing which protects and takes care of the soul. That is why in this Iron Age, Kabir Sahib started this practice of giving the complete initiation at one time, given or giving the Simran and the sound current at one time so that the disciples would not have to face this difficulty of not being taken care of by the Master. But we people do not understand this, and we do not take full advantage of the grace of the Master. What do we do? We do not do enough Simran. We are supposed to do Simran all the time. When we are walking, talking, sitting, standing, or doing anything with our hands and feet, when our mind is not engaged in any type of calculation. If we do Simran all of the time, the amount of Simran which we are supposed to do can be done very easily. And after that, when we sit for meditation, since before we sit, we would have done our Simran, at once our soul will, will withdraw from the body and we will start hearing the sound current by itself. But because we do not place enough emphasis on Simran, that is why when we sit for meditation, all our time is spent in just collecting our thoughts. And because we lack in Simran, that is why we hardly withdraw our soul from our body. A reading from The Light of Ajayb by Santji on doing enough Simran practice so when we start to meditate we're already quickly concentrating and progressing within. Uh, one other comment I want to make about this reading. We can use earplugs. Of course early in the morning it's very quiet and that is a key time for meditation during the early morning hours, sometimes called Amrit Vela, or Hour of Elixir, or Brahma Muhurta, the Hour of God, early in the morning when it's dark, when it's quiet. A kind of natural sensory deprivation is occurring when it's uh, dark or dim and quiet. So nature is providing the headphones or earplugs, the cave or the shade the darkened room or the sleep mask, you know, it's very dark, very quiet, very still, conducive for inner seeing and inner hearing during meditation. One other quick question from The Light of Ajayb. Another question about meditation. Santji says, yes, in the condition of sickness, you can lie down and meditate because when you are sick, you might have pain in your body. And even if you lie down, you will not fall asleep. But if you are lying down while you are healthy, then it is very likely that you will sleep and not meditate and you will miss the time of meditation. Unquote. I thought I'd share that. It might be helpful to some to hear that about meditating when sick. It's okay to lie down to meditate as long as you stay awake. thought that might be a helpful 
reply to also include. The spiritual teachings of Baba Devi Sahib of Maradabad, the famous devotee of Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, Baba Devi Sahib actually was the first person to publish the Ghat Ramayan, the famous spiritual classic of Tulsi Sahib long ago. Those persons who live and practice in accordance with this tradition and principle are called sadhus or sages, and those who have reached or raised themselves into that realm where the truth alone exists are called sants. The English word saint, though close and the nearest match, is not an exact translation of the Hindi or Sanskrit word sant. The pathway to the liberation of the jiva, the individual soul, already exists within each one of us. Unless one treads onto this path himself or herself, it is not possible for him or her either to attain freedom from the cycles of existence, which is the real fruit of any religion, or to know the true wisdom inherent in other religions, or to understand the right meaning of the scriptures belonging to his or her own religious sect, regardless of however great a pundit or priest he or she may be. The common message is that all the sons have to give is that whatever inside or outside can be seen comes into sight, gross or subtle, and as far as there is form or shape, all is illusory and impermanent. Beyond this world of forms is a realm which has never been born and will never die or be destroyed. That alone is truth. It is indestructible. It has no color, no shape, no form, and no particular name. In other words, it is anami or nameless, soundless, formless. But it is something which can be perceived or understood and therefore is entitled to be described or explained with the help of a symbolic name. Jiva, the soul, is a part of this realm because the jiva too is indestructible. Merging this jiva or soul into God is known as internal satsang and where in the outside world spiritual people gather together to discuss these principles is called external satsang. We should go to that place where the way to remove these veils is taught. In the terminology of sants and noble people, such a place is called satsang, association with the eternal truth, association with God, association of devotees to discuss God and meditation and the teachings of the sants, where methods are revealed that create a spirit of bhakti, love and devotion in the spiritual seeker and remove the veils that keep it under cover. Only seeing great souls does not bring well-being to anyone. What is needed is to listen to their words, contemplate their teachings, and put them into practice. This means to listen to the words of great souls with veneration, ponder their meaning, and live accordingly. This is what works. A passage titled, The Spiritual Teachings of Baba Devi Sahib. That reading from Baba Devi Sahib really paraphrases something called the principles of Sant Mat. He is sort of echoing the teachings of his spiritual master, Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, and these spiritual principles that God is formless, is unseen, that physical eyes and physical ears cannot see and hear the heavens that we need another kind of seeing, another kind of hearing to find that eternal 
permanent state of existence, that eternal realm. And so we must find those souls or saints which are already experiencing that. But not only hang out with them at their ashram or center, but pay attention to their words, contemplate the meaning of their words, put them into practice and live accordingly. To not just know the teachings, but to follow the teachings. Some great advice from Baba Devi Sahib of Maradabad. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. After the break, I'll share with you a reading about the inner music, the sound current from the discourses of Baba Devi Sahib of Maradabad. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned. Spiritual Awakening Radio continues. Before I begin the next reading about the inner music, based on the teachings of Baba Devi Sahib of Maradabad, I wanted to go back and share a couple of more comments from my notes about the previous reading from The Light of Ajayb on Simran practice, inner seeing and inner hearing during meditation and about the initiation. I wanted to go over those points before moving forward. Simran is remembering God by the practice or technique of repeating his name or names as a mantra or mantras. In the San tradition, for the most part, this is done mentally within the privacy of your own thoughts. It is a mental chant. You sing or chant these names in your mind with the tongue of thought, as they say. So in that sense, Simran can be done anywhere, anytime. It's the first meditation practice of Santmat when someone first sits down and commences their meditation practice. But as Santji said, Simran is also something you try and do as often as you can throughout the day and evening as a spiritual technique, a centering technique. And because it is a mental chant done in the privacy of your own thoughts, you can do it anywhere, anytime, including in the middle of a shopping mall, walking down the aisle of a grocery store, in a crowd, in a forest, alone, or in a gathering of people. So that is a great practice that can be done anywhere, anytime. Something you can take with you, a spiritual technique you can take with you and practice no matter what state of consciousness you are in, the waking state, the dream state, the out-of-body state, you can always do your Simran. You can always do your Manas Jap, your repetition of names of God. When one first starts meditating, as Santji referred to, getting established in the practice, it's best to have ideal conditions. One closes their eyes, preferably in a darkened place, in order to see within. Quietude in the atmosphere makes it easier to hear the inner sound. But, as Santji said, when one gets established in the practice of inner seeing and hearing, it becomes easier. So for someone who is more advanced, more established in their practice, they have a greater flexibility and can meditate in less than ideal, less than pristine circumstances and still enjoy the meditation practice, still enjoy hearing the sound current. And the final point I wanted to mention pertains to the initiation. Santji in the book The Light of Ajayb talked about different types of approaches to initiation in the Sant tradition or alluded to that. And that is something I can speak to. He says, that is why in this Iron Age or Kali Yuga, 
Kabir Sahib started this practice of giving the complete initiation at one time, giving the Simran and the sound current at one time, so that the disciples would not have to face this difficulty of not being taken care of by the Master. He talks about how the, a Master you know, might pass on if there's a two-initiation approach and someone has been initiated into the Simran, if the Master leaves the body before the disciple perfects their Simran and they don't get to the sound, that's most unfortunate. They don't get to the second initiation and learn about the sound current meditation. So he is saying that Kabir Sahib during Kali Yuga started the practice of a single initiation. So they get that information and training about Simran and hearing the sound all at once, all at the same initiation. In the song tradition, there are different approaches to initiation. In the Maharishi Mehi branch of Sant Mat, the Tulsi Sahib Satsang, there are still two initiations given. First into Manas Jap or Simran and Inner Light, and a second initiation into Surit Shab Yoga or the Sound Current, Inner Sound Meditation. And this is being done in a context of individuals who are in touch with a living master, perhaps living not far from an ashram or community. And there is a multiplicity of living teachers, so there is very little danger of someone who has been given the first initiation and then their, their teacher passes on. There's very little danger of them not being able to get to the sound initiation, the second initiation. Uh, in that world, in that Sangha. But that can be an issue in India, most definitely, where individuals get the first initiation but never get around to the second. Now, in addition to the Tulsi Sahib Satsang having a two-fold initiation or two-stage initiation approach, uh, some in the Kabir Satsang also have that same practice. That's the old way of doing so what is Santji referring to here when he talks about Kabir giving a single initiation? This is based on teachings found in a book which Santji himself was involved in translating into English, known as the Anurag Sagar, the Ocean of Love. And I noticed that myself in an earlier program, which you'll find in the archive, uh, I did a program on the very first initiation that Kabir did in Sat Yuga. And I noticed from the readings during that particular program that this sounded a lot like Kabir giving an initiation to a group of individuals covering the entire practice, one single initiation into Simran, Inner Light, and Inner Sound. And so I took note of that. So somewhere... I'm not sure exactly where, but somewhere in the Kabir tradition, there has been this practice of a single initiation as well. I am not familiar with the history of that, but in India, there are two approaches. There is that of a single initiation one can receive into all of the practices at the same time, Simran, Inner Light, and Sound, but others still maintain a tradition of two initiations or a two-step approach where one receives training about manas jap or simran and inner light meditation and when they get established in those then they move on to the second part which is inner sound meditation both of those traditions still exist in india you're hearing spiritual awakening radio having said that coming up after the break i will delve into more of the teachings of baba devi sahib the inner music stay tuned
classical ragas are provided to Spiritual Awakening Radio by Maine-based artist Paul Alexander John, who plays the Indian Bansuri bamboo flute. A great outer music for sound healing. The following discourse is about the inner music. Surat Shab Yoga, Meditation on the Inner Sound Current. This is called The Inner Music and is from the discourses of Baba Devi Sahib of Maradaban, the famous devotee of Tulsi Sahib. Music casts a direct influence on body, organs, and the soul. Diseases of body, organs, and soul get cured by this outer music. This is the impact or influence of sound, which is concerned with the external use of ears. The other kind of music or sound is internal, and the way to listen to that inner music or inner sound is by focusing our attention on the internal shabda or sound that is ringing within each one of us. The inner sound is a highly precious wealth in the life of every human being. So long as the sound is present in a man, he is alive. As soon as the sound exits, it is the end of him. Thus the difference between a corpse and a living man is that while a man is alive, he walks and speaks, and when the sound leaves him, he is neither able to speak or walk. The cycle of life is the result of the inspiration of the sound. Within, there are three compartments apart from the natural or physical part, namely Shabda, or the inner sound, Prakash, or inner light, and darkness. The waves or vibrations of sound permeate the whole of the body through light, darkness, the brain, and the tiny blood vessels, the arteries and veins, in that order. It exists in the body in the form of vitality or life current. It exists in the mental sky in the form of light, while it exists as sound in the void. This sound is an immensely valuable entity. In ancient times, Greeks, Egyptians, Romans, and Hindus have authored several books on sound. That is why I say it is the highest duty of every individual to acquire experiential knowledge of this inner sound and to investigate or explore the origin or source from where this sound flows out. says Baba Devi Sahib. It is our duty to listen to this inner sound, to focus all of our attention upon it and trace it back to its origin. It's a river of sound that's flowing out from the Godhead. So, like a fish swimming upstream, we can go back to this ocean this ocean of God, this ocean of love, where the sound is coming from. And that is another description of the yoga of sound, Surat Shabd Yoga. A kind of yoga of the word, or logos, which indeed has been talked about in the writings of Egyptians and Greeks and Hindus in ancient times. The following reading is from the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi Paramhans, the great disciple and spiritual successor of Baba Devi Sahib. Maharishi Mehi, your Lord lives beyond the three coverings of your body. If you wish to meet him, strike your bond with the saints and sages. Banish your egoism and self-praise with the help of the Guru Mantra. 
The secret of the master is to look within yourself immediately, closing both the eyes and joining their currents at the third eye. You will put a stop to your caprice of your mind and the dazzling star will appear. From there you will behold your paths of light and sound. They are the actual paths to go beyond the three coverings of your body. The saints declare pursuing the above two paths of light and sound helps souls to become free from the illusions. Withdrawing your surat soul, the attention faculty of the soul, from all trappings, cross the spheres of darkness and light and enter immediately the sphere of sound. Again, moving from the sphere of sound to the sphere of soundlessness where the Almighty resides. O virtuous ones, bear in mind the instructions of Baba Devi Sahib, says Mehi. Then alone you will have peace and happiness and you will be freed from the very cycle of birth and death. O traveler, seek the path that lies within you. You and your beloved also are in the same body. O traveler, if you want to go to your beloved, then you seek the path inside your body and do not delay. The four spheres of darkness, light, sound, and soundlessness are lying within the fort of your body. You have stepped down into the darkness, but your beloved is in the soundless sphere. Trapped in darkness, you are far away from your beloved. Now again to meet your beloved, begin your journey of the soundless sphere. Your Lord is found at all places, but is not perceptible. If you journey across the soundless sphere, you may apprehend him. On finding the central point within the two eyebrows, or third eye center, pursue the path ahead, opening the door of the sphere of light with the yoga of vision. Immediately enter the very sphere of light. Catching the cord of the central sound of the subtler sphere, enter the soundless sphere within, with the help of Surat, the attention faculty of the soul and burn the bundles of triad attributes to reach your Lord, where both Saguna and Narguna, form and formless, are fully relinquished. Maharishi Mehi says, Devi Sahib's instructions are highly beneficial. Mehi sacrifices all at his feet. After the break, more readings from the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi Paramhans about the inward journey of the soul. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more after this break. Mystic Wisdom from Rural India, today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Earlier I revisited a book I put online called The Light of Ajayb, on Simran practice, the repetition of sacred names of God, and featured a reading from the mystic verses of Baba Devi Sahib of Moradabad. And now his Guru Muk spiritual successor, Maharishi Mehi. More readings from the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi on the inward journey of the soul. Padavali hymn number 52 starts off sounding very similar to hymn 51, but there are significant differences. O oh, traveler, Seek the path that lies within you. O traveler, you and your beloved are in the same body. Your beloved is pervading everywhere but is not being perceived. 
those initiated by the Master are able to recognize Him within their bodies. O traveler, if you wish to go alone on the path to the Supreme Lord, look for the path within and do not delay. The four spheres of darkness, light, sound, and soundlessness, they all lie within the fort of your body. You fell down to the darkness, the realm of darkness, but your beloved is in the sphere of soundlessness. Now you go again, go back to the sphere of soundlessness through the tenth door. Pursuing the inner light and practicing the yoga of sound, Listen to the many sounds and closely watch the dazzling light. Go along the path where the five sounds resonate. Mount up as you get drawn towards them. Never think that there are other means of going to the sphere of soundlessness. Without the yoga of vision and the yoga of sound, Mehi says that going along this lone path is the secret path to God, as revealed by the saints. Catching the most subtle sound amidst the different sounds go along the solitary path lying within your body. Another reading from the Padavali hymns of Maharishi Mehi. Go to the shelter of the Master and sing His praises. Let the attention of your soul, the surat, be fixed at the point between the two eyebrows, the third eye center. Gaze intensely at the central point of the space between the two eyebrows. As you do so, the point glitters and the five colors also become visible. Lightning strikes with its rapidity and its flash penetrates the lotus with a thousand petals. The earthen lamp burns, giving light, and stars twinkle. The full moon is seen radiating its light and giving immense joy. The surat soul ascends the subtle sphere and watches the sun deity halting there. Brahma Lok is extraordinary, but leaving this tenth door, the surat soul ascends further, going up above the subtle sphere and entering the sphere of sounds. It gets rid of the false sounds and colors as it gets fully immersed in the quintessential one. All miseries and duality get fully eliminated. Maharishi Mehi says that Baba Devi Sahib delivers the souls in bondage explaining and propagating the true means of bhakti or devotion to God. May he with folded hands and head bowing praises his compassionate master who gave him the secrets of devotion to God. And finally today, hymn number 48 from the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi Paramhans. The Sat Guru would tell you about the ways of the internal sky. Through the center of the darkness caused by the closed eyes, the Surat soul climbing on the chariot of the Yoga of Vision and passing through the tenth door, being more subtle than the font of the needle, enters the internal sky. The surat leaves the sphere of light and plunges into sounds, crossing the sphere of sounds with the help of the yoga of sound. The surat soul reaches the final goal, the fixed, eternal, timeless realm. May he relies upon his Satguru and always bows at his feet. Four stages of practice, according to Maharishi Mehi. There is darkness. When we close our eyes, we see darkness. But by concentrating at the third eye center, repeating the sacred name or names we are given, the Guru Mantra, 
the light appears in the darkness and sound manifests many sounds a higher sound a more subtle sound a quintessential sound eventually appears or sarashabd and we go beyond those lower lights and sounds and we eventually reach the sphere of soundlessness beyond the lights beyond the sounds this is the realm of God we use language of up and down in 3d space-time but it's really not about up and down it's a state of consciousness that we are making our way towards our transitioning towards through these realms of form and formlessness lights and sounds to get to the soundless one the supreme being also called the nameless one anami parush sat parush the soundless one radhaswami the ocean of love thanks for joining me today on spiritual awakening radio this book, the Padavali, the hymns of Maharishi Mehi, are available online for free. I can send you a link to the Padavali. The essential teachings of Baba Devi Sahib I also put online. The Light of Ajayb, a book that's several hundred pages long, featuring Q&A about following Santmat as your spiritual path, is also online. You can read that for free. I can send you links to these books. Send me an email or text me. The email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. You can text me at this number, 508-603-9381. 508-603-9381 or email james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Ask for the links to these books, The Pot of Ali of Maharishi Mehi, The Light of Ajayb, and... The Essential Teachings of Baba Devi Sahib. Visit my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. There is a PayPal donate button at the website. There are links to blogs, Tumblr, Twitter, Medium, daily spiritual quotes available. And links to other podcasts. All can be found at the website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. Tune in again next week at the same time for another edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio.